today we are going to talk a little bit about diabetes and pregnancy. Uh, as we all know, diabetes is a very common disease in India. So uh, we rank among the largest population of diabetes in the whole world. And we say that every fourth Indian is diabetes. Also in view of our population, the diabetes incidence is also quite high in women. And also we find uh, women in the childbearing age having diabetes. In, in the females who are pregnant, diabetes is divided into two parts. In those females who are already diabetic and then become pregnant versus what we know as gestational diabetes. Gestational diabetes is are, are pregnant females who never had diabetes but during pregnancy they get diabetes. So normally every obstetrician will be checking your sugars of a, of a pregnant woman on a regular basis so that they can pick up diabetes at a very early part of pregnancy. The patient should also know that if they have a family history of diabetes, for example, a mother, father, or the other family members, or a brother or sister, then she is likely to have diabetes. Those patients, those females who develop diabetes during pregnancy, what is known as gestational diabetes, can either have diabetes will be persisting throughout life, or they can subsequently have normal sugars post-pregnancy but at a later stage have an increased incidence of developing diabetes. So these pregnant mothers who develop gestational diabetes should be careful about that. The patient should be aware, the pregnant mother should be aware that as soon as she is detected to be diabetes in pregnancy, she should consult her uh, nearest uh, diabetic specialist. The reason is that if the sugar remains uncontrolled during pregnancy, then it can have uh, side effects or it can have bad effects on the newborn child. This newborn child can develop large number of congenital abnormalities. Therefore, it is necessary that during the entire pregnancy and during labor, the sugar should be tightly under control. It is also to note that if you are on some kind of a medication for diabetes and then subsequently you can become pregnant, then to contact your nearest diabetologist because some of these anti-diabetic medications cannot be used during pregnancy as they can often be harmful to the child. So for a better future both for the mother and the upcoming child it is necessary to recognize the, the entity of gestational diabetes. Please check the sugars at the regular intervals and as soon as it is detected to control the sugars as tightly as possible to prevent future damage to the newly born child. Today we are discussing a very important part of diabetic therapy and that is diabetic emergency. Diabetic emergencies are of two types. One is hypoglycemia or low sugars or hyperglycemia when we have too much of sugars in our body. We'll discuss hypoglycemia. The low sugar level in the body occurs when a diabetic patient who is on regular medications either has not taken his adequate meals or has a fever, an infection, a vomiting or a loose motion because of which the blood sugar falls. Any diabetic patient should be aware to pick out the early signs and symptoms of fall in blood sugar levels to prevent further complication. One has to remember that your brain can only function in presence of glucose as a source of energy. So if the sugar was very low then a person can become unconscious or comatose. The early signs of low sugars are a discomfort and uneasiness sweating, a change in sensorium, patient might feel dizzy, disoriented, cannot recognize nearby people, vomiting and severe sweating. Once the sugar goes very low, the patient can become almost unconscious. What is more important is that if you recognize the symptoms, then you should instruct the patient to take or one should give him glucose in any form so as to increase the sugar. 
A simple uh, rule is what is known as the rule of 50. That is, if you check the sugars are it is less than 70, then you should give him 15 grams of carbohydrates, wait for 15 minutes and check the sugars. If the sugars are again low, then you should repeat the same 15 grams, uh, grams of carbohydrates. You might have to consider doing it for a couple of times more. Sometimes you need to check the sugar again after 30 to 60 minutes to be sure that the sugar levels are low. Not to forget that after some time you need to talk to your family doctor regarding the same. So if the patient, uh, if the patient has uh, suffered a hypoglycemia, then uh, this patient should be immediately treated with the above, uh, uh, above 15 grams of carbohydrates. So what is an example of 15 grams of carbohydrates? For example, 1 teaspoon of sugar or 1 teaspoon of honey or you can give him any soft drink, 100 ml of soft drink. So these are the main, uh, main things you should consider when these patients are diabetic. The other is hyperglycemic coma when the sugars go very high. So any patient who is, on, who is on medication and complains of sweating, uneasiness, giddiness, the other possibility may be a very high sugar. This usually occurs in the presence of an infection or if the patient has skipped his diabetic medication. If the sugars are more than 250, it is imperative that you, you contact your nearest diabetic specialist or doctor to see that you get the blood sugars back under control. we are going to discuss about diabetes and that is lifestyle modifications in diabetes. We know that there are various treatment options in diabetes including medicines in tablet forms and insulin. But what we also need to know how can we change our diet, how can we change our lifestyle so that we can achieve better control of our sugar levels with minimum possible use of medications and insulin. So we most important part of our controlling of sugar is how do we control our calorie intake. Food which is the major source of sugar surge and uncontrolled diabetes need to be very closely monitored. So we will just discuss the basic principle of food intake. One, no form of sugar or refined sugar to be consumed during meals. So sugar in any form like refined sugar, jaggery or any other artificial sugar should not be consumed. The artificial sweeteners up to a certain extent a certain extent are allowed. We need to consume less amount of carbohydrates which usually comes from sweet oily fried food. So sweet oily fried food like samosa, batati vada etc should be taken in a very small amount or should be avoided as much as possible. Your food portion should have adequate content of protein intake. Protein are very good source of calories. At the same time, they, they will sustain you a glucose level for over a long period of time and prevent a glucose surge. It is also important that you, you consume small quantity of food but at a regular intervals rather than less number or less frequency of meals with a large amount of food. A balanced diet should contain adequate amount of proteins, fats and carbohydrates and also should include vegetables whole wheats and fresh food during each meal. Sugar substitute can be eaten. If required, you can take opinion from a dietitian to chalk out a dietary plan as per your requirement. The next most important part of this is uh, exercise. So how much amount of exercise is required for a normal person who is diabetic? So we recommend that he should take about 30 to 40 minutes of exercise a brisk exercise at least six days in a week so that exercise may be cycling walking swimming whatever as per permissible to that patient if you can improve our lifestyle modification if you can reduce the weight the insulin resistance falls and the sugars will ultimately come under control it will help you reduce your amount of medications a good tightly controlled sugar prevents further complication of diabetes 
this type of modification does not require any money but just the right attitude for the sake. We know that the India is a diabetic capital of the world and every 4 to 6 Indian is diabetic. So the question is that how do you prevent from getting diabetes? How can you reduce the risk of getting diabetes? Diabetes has two parts. One is where it is hereditary and the other is which you acquire over a period of time. So can you really reduce the risk of diabetes? The answer is not that simple. But yes, we can take some steps so that we can either avoid getting diabetes or you can at least prolong the onset of diabetes. So how can we help that? First, weight. It is very common that if you have excess amount of weight, if you are overweight, you are morbidly obese, then you develop insulin resistance and your sugar level will go high. The same patients when they lose weight, then the sugar will come back to normal without requiring any anti-diabetic medication. Exercise regularly. Exercise must be a part of each and every individual more so in those patients who are obese, those patients who lead a sedentary lifestyle and for those patients who have a very strong family history of diabetes. Stress increases your sugar levels by about 10 to 20 percent. So any kind of stress, maybe it physical stress or mental stress is enough to increase your blood sugar level. Quit smoking. Smoking not only helps in the regularization of the stress, regularization of the sugar level, the other benefits include stroke, prevention of heart attack, heart failure and prevention of development of other diseases like gangrene. Important part of diabetic restrictions in patients who want to reduce the risk of diabetes is to take the meals at regular intervals and to take smaller portions of food. The regular medication, regular follow will prevent the development of diabetes. What kind of dietary modifications we are looking at? We must consume large amount of green leafy vegetables, fresh fruits, beans, nuts, large amount of cereals. It is better to consume whole fruit rather than taking juices. Any packed food, packed juices are a strict no no. Avoid taking high salt diets. Packed foods, breads are etc. very high contained in salt. Food which are rich in fibers, cereals, etc. will get your sugars to lower level. If you are a meat eater, consume lean meat such as chicken or egg whites. So fats to be avoided in patients who are diabetic. So if we adhere to this kind of diabetic medications, I mean diabetic restrictions, then it is found that it will keep your weight under control and the risk of developing diabetes is significantly mitigated.